Hey there, Aries. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your reading for the month of August of 2021. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It is very nice to meet you. And if you are returning, what's up, guys? So as you guys know, this is a general reading, yes? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is a timeless reading as well. Just because this is the message that's coming through for August of 2021, it does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that we could be talking to a cross watcher here, yes? So that means that the roles can be reversed. Just place things into your life as they naturally fit. Do not try to force anything that doesn't naturally fit there. If you guys are interested in getting a reading with me, a personal reading with me, I am available for that. All of the information can be found in the description box below. Also, I highly recommend that you guys check us out over on Patreon. I do all of my extra content on Patreon. Um, which is great. But then also, if you'd just like to support the channel, that is an ex excellent way to do so, as it does help me to remain available to be here for the collective. Yes? Uh, uh, as always, I recommend that you guys definitely leave your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know how you are feeling. Let me know how this is resonating for you or what this is bringing up for you. I love hearing th from you guys. I love having a conversation with you guys. If you are enjoying this reading or if you end up enjoying this reading, definitely make sure to smash that like button for me. And if you're new and you haven't done so already, please su consider subscribing. Yeah. Whew. Okay, Aries. So I have your pre-shuffle here. The first thing that I want to say, Aries, is it feels like you're very determined in this energy. You're being led by something. There is a new light within you that has sparked a flame, is what I'm hearing. Um, this may be something that you're pretty passionate about. Um, I, I mean, I do feel like there's a strong level of passion here for you, but it's not that type of passion that's like, wake up in the morning, like extremely excited and like pretty like overzealous. Like this is not like an extreme form of passion but what it feels like it, to be honest with you Aries it feels very subtle or just very natural very much integrated it's not like anything that's new it's not it doesn't have that like exciting new car scent or like exciting new relationship or brand new circumstance type feeling it just feel but it, it it feels like you're very much settled in to this direction to this point of view to this mindset um, it feels like it's just a very natural part of your flow, of your energetic reality, of your energetic flow right now. At the bottom of the deck of your pre-shuffle, and you do have a number of cards here for your pre-shuffle, but at the bottom of the deck, you have the Knight of Wands, okay? And this is the energy, energy that's giving me this feeling of being in this flow, being in... Okay, well, what I'm hearing for you, Aries, is being enlightened by something, having some sort of vision, some sort of inspiration, some sort of spiritual and cognitive uh, understanding that is helping to drive you forward. But it's not like the typical Knight of Wands energy where it's like super fast moving or super excitable or like wishy-washy in, in one second, out the next, you know, that kind of energy. It feels like a very stable energy for you, okay? There is a good amount of passion and drive here, but that also could be translating into a bit of anger or frustration or determination, okay, Aries? Now, you have three cards here that have fallen face up, and then you have four more that have fallen face down. So I'm taking this as the face up cards are what are what you are facing on the surface or what, what other people may be seeing about your reality right now on the surface. You have the moon with the eight of cups, and the three of wands, all right? So what this is saying for you, Aries, is that I feel like you're seeing through some sort of illusion with the moon here. I, I feel like there's a, there's a big, I mean, this, this might be generic and cliche, but it's, this kind of does feel like a pretty big cycle is coming to a close for you, but it's happening because of your sense of awareness your ability to see through the illusions of a situation here. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm feeling with the moon. Um, I'm using the Revelations deck right now, which has um, a reversed version and an upright version. But I I'll explain that if, if I feel like it's necessary. But I just feel like with the moon here... And then coupled with the Eight of Cups and the Three of Wands, you're seeing past a good amount of illusion in your life right now. And you're taking steps or making preparations to leave that behind. What, what once was a pretty emotionally fulfilling situation now doesn't have that same, that same vibe. 
Um, and I feel like you're making preparations, Aries, to make a move, to move. I, I, this could be to move like homes, like, you know, move out of out of a certain area or um, just move forward, making preparations to move forward in your life. And also the moon is also speaking of you are might be actually being pretty secretive about it right now. Like you're not like you're trying to be all kinds of deceptive or anything, but you're also keeping things to yourself. It feels like with that energy. Okay. Let's look at what we have face down for you. Whoa. Okay. So, um, <laughs> you have four more cards here. Uh, only one of them is upright. And it, to me, it's the best card. For in this situation, it's the best card to be upright here, and it's justice, all right? Now, you have that with the Four of Cups, the Ten of Wands, and the Lovers, all in reverse, okay? What I'm feeling for the Lovers right now is this could be a romantic relationship for you, um, but I don't feel like that's the only way that it can be interpreted right now. What I'm feeling much stronger for you, Aries, is this is the lovers is just representing some form of interpersonal relationship, whether it be an actual romantic partner or family members or friends or people that you once considered friends or once thought were friends. The energy that I'm getting from the lovers in reverse is that you are no longer choosing to stick around in this situation. And I am kind of feeling like Aries, there was a little bit of obligation for you to re remain involved with this group of people, with this individual, with this type of person, with, with something. There was a, there was a, a strong level of obligation to remain involved. And that's what the 10 of wands is representing. And then the four of cups is representing the energy of you actually choosing to be happy because if you look at this card here on the upright version of the four of cups you have this individual who's all like no i don't want this anymore or i don't want to take this opportunity or i'm bored or i'm feeling apathetic that's where that's the normal four of cups right but when you look at the four of cups reversed in this card this woman is happy she's got a big old smile on her face she's accepting something right and it to me especially with coupled with the Ten of Wands here, which speaks of burdens, okay? And then you have Justice here, and the Justice is upright. I feel like what you are choosing here, because the Lovers is also about a choice, what you are choosing here, Aries, is that which is going to make you happy. And now that I'm speak talking through this, this, the Knight of Cups, you have the Knight of Cups at the bottom of the deck with the Seven of Cups underneath that, um, whatever it is that you are choosing is that is making you happy or that you want to make happy, want you to, well, whatever you're choosing that is making you happy, it's coming from you understanding the options that are around you or what's been going on around you, all the different realities, all the different options, all the different feelings around you, and you actively choosing that which is going to make you happy. And that is what is driving you here. Okay. I feel like you're bringing justice into your life, Aries, by choosing to no longer involve yourself in some sort of interpersonal relationship that was doing nothing but bogging you down or holding you back or creating some sort of burden in your life, okay? I mean, this is a really good energy for you so far, Aries, um, but let's, let's reshuffle, recollect. Uh, I am going to give this a few clearing shuffles here for you Aries and then we're going to get into the rest of the reading for you yeah we'll see what other messages we have for you for the month of August of 2021 and beyond yes all right guys five shuffles here one this is two for my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, make sure to watch your Sun, Moon, and Rising sign for a complete picture as the, of the message that could be coming through for you this month. This is three. Also, if you're looking for love messages specifically, I recommend that you check out your Venus sign. Yeah, this is four. For my Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising, potentially even Venus, and this is five. All right, Aries, let's cut the deck. All right. Overall energy for you, Aries, is the hermit. Mm -mm. Yeah, this makes a whole lot of sense, Aries, because what I feel like is you're in a very solitary mode right now. Um, 
<sighs> I really just feel like you just want to be alone. You just want to be with yourself right now. You're finding more fulfillment, more happiness, more contentment, more peace by being with yourself. I really, and it's so funny, Aries, because like in the in sidereal astrology, I um I, my my natal sun was in Aries, and I very much relate with a lot of Aries energy sometimes, and I'm definitely feeling this vibe right now. Like I would much rather the hermit. I would much rather be alone, be with myself, have a sense of peace and serenity where I can just sit and meditate and contemplate and just cultivate a sense of happiness and peace within than be out and around a bunch of people that just are just going to throw me off of my balance. And the thing about this hermit energy for you, Aries, is I don't feel like you're like really trying to go on any sort of pilgrimage right now. I don't feel like you're trying to do any sort of real deep soul searching at the moment. Not that that would be bad if you wanted to, and definitely not that it's bad that you that I'm not necessarily feeling like that that's what this hermit energy represents for you. What I'm feeling the most for you right now, Aries, is you just want to be alone on your own. You just want to be alone. You want to spend time with yourself. You don't want the, the distractions of other people and their drama. Like, no. Ready to pair. Did you hear that? Bluetooth is ready to pair, you guys. Anyway, you don't, like, that's what this hermit energy, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was my neighbor. Um, that's what this hermit energy feels like for you right now, all right? Underneath, this is excellent, Aries, underneath the hermit is the four of wands. Underneath the four of wands, we're back to the, the, the moon. And then underneath the moon, you have the page of wands. Hold on just a second, guys. Sorry, I wanted to close my door so that whatever my neighbors are listening to is not distracting. Okay, so um, Aries, I love the fact that in your overall energy here, you have the four of wands. Um, because to me, what that is speaking to is a level of personal stability, okay? Um, spiritual stability, energetic stability, just a feeling of security within yourself, your emotions, your feelings, your energetic vibe. I mean, I feel like you're really, really stable and whole and complete in that sense. And that's allowing you to really, that's what's allowing you to see past the illusions that could be around you right now. I feel like this moon energy could be fairly catastrophic in other situations. Like the uh, unpredictability of the moon energy, the the hidden aspect of things, the illusionary aspect of things, the fact that, you know, things are, are not necessarily as they seem with the moon type of energy, that could easily throw somebody off. But I don't feel like it's even remotely affecting you, Aries. Like, I feel like you're so solid with this Four of Wands energy. You're so solid within yourself that no matter what is happening around you, you're good. Okay, this is very much feeling like a translation of what the King of Cups actually can represent. Okay, because the King of Cups can represent an energy of um, being able to weather any sort of emotional storm and just like, like handle it like it's nothing. Like nothing is going to throw him off of that, off of his throne, off of his center, off of his emotional center, right? This is very, it does be, I, I wonder if the King of Cups is actually going to come out here for you in the rest of the reading. But then finally at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Page of Wands. Okay, so uh, uh, there is definitely an energy here, Aries, of uh, re-identifying yourself, uh, changing the game. I feel like some of you with this Page of Wands energy, you have a very specific and very new message to bring to the people around you. And it does not align with what, with any sort of narcissistic energies that are around you or any sort of, maybe even some, any sort of narcissistic tendencies that you may have expressed in the past. But I kind of feel like there are, there are certain narcissistic individuals or energies that are around you that you're, you may very well be reading the riot act right now. I just feel like there's a very strong and passionate, passionate new message that you have for the people around you that does not align with the person that you used to be. Because also keep in mind that the page of wands can represent a change in identity. And with this hermit energy here, it does feel like you're very, even though I don't feel like you're going on some sort of pilgrimage or you're trying to, uh, you know, discover any sort of inner light or anything like that, 
I feel like you're very, very, very connected to yourself. You have a very strong understanding of what it is you're truly feeling and how it is you truly want to express yourself, how it is you really want to live, what it is you actually want in your energetic space and around you at this time, right? So whatever it is that you're communicating or wanting or needing or desiring to communicate with this page of wands energy, it's coming from a very deep and truthful place within, okay? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get into the rest of your reading here, Aries. We're going to look at the first half and the second half of your reading. First half of your reading is going to look at the past up until the current surrounding energies. And then the second half of your reading is going to look at the current surrounding energies off into the future. Yes? First set of surrounding energies for you, Aries, we have... Damn! Yo! Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, Aries. The very first card that came out is the King of Cups. Aries, you can't make this shit up. You are so emotionally grounded and emotionally stable right now. The first fucking card, yo. Oh my God. I love it when this shit happens. Okay, there you go. There's that emotional stability. And you know what's crazy? What I feel like here, obviously this has, you see, it has an, uh, a re uh, an upright and a reversed version. I don't, I, I, when I pull my cards this way, when I do this spread, I don't, allow my cards to live in reverse. The only time I read a reversal is if I like free shuffle when you guys see me doing this type of thing and I'm just letting the cards come out. That's when I'll, that's like what I did for your pre-shuffle, right? That's when I'll read a reversal. I don't keep my cards in reverse in living in the deck. Um, so when I do any sort of specific spread, they always come out upright, but it doesn't matter because what I feel like here, Aries, is with this reversed or opposite side of the card. You see how the, the King of Cups is extending his cup to something or someone? I don't feel like you're being emotionally stingy, but I do feel like you're sitting here on your throne being very consciously, cognitively aware of who and what it is you extend your emotional ener uh, uh, your emotions to, your energetic time, your energe whatever, your, your emotional or your energy to. You're being very consciously aware of that, okay? You're sitting here uh, uh, sizing things up saying, do I want to extend my, my emotions or my energy back to that or not? It's a very good place for you to be. It's a very wise place for you to be, okay? <laughs> I can't believe that happened. I mean, I can, but I, whatever. I, I, I still, like, I still get, I shouldn't be surprised that shit like that, like this happens with me feeling like the King of Cups energy could come out for you and then the very first card is the King of Cups. I shouldn't be surprised, but sometimes I still, like, it's still cool when it happens, okay? King of Cups is coupled with the Ace of Pentacles. Oh, wow. So uh, the other thing that I'm getting with this King of Cups here for you, Aries, is that a lot of what you dealt with in the past has helped you to develop into this very emotionally foundational being. Emotionally in tune, emotionally aware, emotionally strong, having a very strong emotional foundation. And that right there is helping you generate a brand new reality, okay? I often see the Ace of Pentacles as a seed that can be planted, that is generated, and then can be planted into the earth for something brand new to grow. Your emotional stability, your emotional foundation, your emotional maturity is literally helping you generate a new seed to plant into the, into the ground to grow into your life. Okay, I also am getting the feeling, Aries, that um, you're aware of this and you're helping to nurture this seed. You're actively helping to nurture this seed. And that also, that also could be a very good reason as to why you're spending so much time on your own, or at least you want to. Because there's this feeling of, uh, especially coming from the King of Cups, there's a feeling of, I don't want any sort of negative energies or anyone else's energy getting in here, fucking this up for me. Or for us or whomever, whatever it is you're working on. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want any sort of outside influence that could uh, have a negative impact on what it is you're trying to build or grow or develop. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. You have the Nine of Swords. Interesting. To be honest with you, Aries, I feel like these this is other people around you. 
Now, also, this could be you, okay? This could be you uh, with this emotional stability with the King of Cups here. I really kind of feel like this could be you facing any sort of fears head on and not allowing them to affect you, okay? The Nine of Swords is coupled with the Queen of Wands now, okay? Yes, so... Um, I definitely feel like this is a balance for you between masculine and feminine energy. Also, the Queen of Wands would represent you, Aries, because the Queen of Wands, the Queens represent the, the cardinal signs. And Aries, you are a cardinal sign here. Um, see, here's the thing. I, I feel like this Nine of Swords energy could be, the first thing that I felt was that it was the, uh, it was the people around you. Um, that could be really expressing this energy. And at one time in the past, you were vibing with that, right? So now I'm, I'm also understanding that this is, in fact, you facing any sort of fearful energy head on, face on, and not allowing it to affect your alignment. For some of you, Aries, you're taking the fearful energies that are being projected by others around you and are directly taking that in and transmuting it into drive towards keeping yourself in a certain alignment and going in a certain direction for yourself, okay? But whatever the, whatever this actually means for you, Aries, um, I, I feel like the big point here is that you are not allowing, allowing any sort of fearful, illusionary energy to knock you out of your alignment, which is beautiful. Ch your challenge here, Aries, in the first half of your reading is the Eight of Pentacles, Continuing with a, a, some sort of consistent work. You have to just keep it consistent. You just have to keep on going, Aries. Okay? And you're doing very well. And what I'm hearing is you're doing a great job. Uh, but just... the, In some cases, the struggle might be real. I mean, okay, I get that. Um, but again, I, I feel like you're doing very well with this. And it's really not that much, that much more difficult to continue. But the message here is just... Your challenge at this point, at least in this point of the reading, is just to continue with your consistent craftsmanship work, yes? Just interested in seeing what the... Okay, so I'm looking at the, the, the opposite sides of this. And on this side, which, which would technically be the reversal, there could be, it kind of looks like he's either just beginning to put some sort of details on something, or he might be like uh, disassembling something. But then on the upright position, which is the way it came out naturally, it, you see that there's like more finer detail being put into if the card, if my camera would focus. But it looks like there's fine detail being put into his pentacle here or whatever his crafting. Okay. So I think I really feel like Aries, your challenge is to continue moving forward and continue focusing on the details of a situation. The devil is in the details. Uh, the Eight of Pentacles is coupled with the Five of Swords. Whoa. Okay, this is kind of translating into an against all odds type of energy, Aries, which I wouldn't necessarily uh, condone or I wouldn't really recommend anyone fight for this or... Um, look to be in a type of energy like this. Uh, but in this case for you, Aries, it feels like a natural occurrence. It feels like you really fighting against any sort of odds or energies or people that may be trying to knock you out of your alignment, which is what I was saying. Like, I really feel like you're staying very focused and making sure that you keep yourself in an environment where you have the opportunity to stay in your alignment. Okay, there are a number of opposing energies around you right now. That and, 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 and to be honest with you, Aries, it really is translating into a misery loves company type of situation. Okay. Picking your battles wisely. Choosing what to give into and what not to give into. Uh, really keeping up with your craftsmanship, with your hard work against any sort of odds that may be facing you, okay? 
or that you may be up against. I don't know. And it really doesn't even feel like that's that that this energy, this challenge right now is that much of a problem. Again, I feel like you're in such deeply strong alignment with yourself that this is almost child's play. This type of challenge that that's coming for it almost feels laughable. Almost. Like, I wouldn't get so cocky, <laughs> Aries, that you're now going to start laughing in the face of danger because then that puts you at risk of not being aware enough to keep yourself safe. But at the same time, like, it almost feels trivial at this point because you're so deep, deeply entrenched in you or whatever. And, and, and entrenched does may not be, like, the absolute best word to use there, but that's kind of what I'm getting, okay? Your closing message or potential outcome, Aries, for the first half of your reading is the Six of Swords. You are moving forward. And I am hearing against all odds. You are absolutely moving forward. Six of Swords is coupled with... Damn! The Knight of Swords. Like, you're really fighting for this, Aries. And this is a good thing. This is one of those situations where I would say the Knight of Swords energy is very well placed. Using, and this, it, it feels like you're, at, you're, you're approaching this energy from a very wise position, which would make perfect sense, King of Cups, okay? Because the other thing that I was, I was feeling for the King of Cups is that you are very much willing to stand your ground and do what it is you know you need to do, even though it's not necessarily easy, even though you don't, you aren't necessarily, or you cannot necessarily be nice about it. That's where the Knight of Swords comes in. You are using, you are wielding this power very effectively, Aries. That's what I'm hearing. The Knight of Swords is a very volatile energy. It's one of the fastest moving knights in the deck, which rivals the Knight of Wands. I, can, I would say that the Knight of Swords is a little faster, like the fastest moving. But the Knight of Swords can also be shoot first, ask questions later. That's not you here, Aries. You're keeping this Knight of Swords energy tucked, sheathed, very, very carefully, very, very comfortably, very consciously. You're keeping it sheathed. But that moment where that but that moment when it turns out that you actually now have to draw this sword, people better be wary. Because blood will be shed. And I don't mean physically, like I am not, absolutely not condoning physical violence, physical bloodshed. But energetically speaking, if you've got to knock a couple heads, if you've got to, yo, if you've got to cut, cut off a couple Hydra heads, baby boy, baby girl, you are doing it. But only when it's absolutely necessary. And this is all in service of you moving forward. Like I'm, I'm literally seeing with this Aries, the Six of Swords energy and the Knight of Swords, I see you cutting away any sort of binds or brambles or entanglement that only keep trying to hold you back. The more that they try and, and, and wrap themselves around this vehicle of movement forward for you, the more you just slice them away like freaking butter. You know what I mean? Okay. Woo! This is a long reading for you, Aries. We're only, we're only getting into the second half now. Mm. There's a butterfly flying outside around my window. Boop! That's a message for some of you. All right, Aries, let's get into the second half of your reading here. Yes? So second half of your reading is going to look at the current energy moving forward off into the future. Yes? First set of surrounding energies for you, Aries, in the first, oh, second half of your reading, you have the fool. Fucking right, Aries. I love it. You're moving forward. You're taking a leap of faith. You're jumping into a new reality is what I'm hearing. And you're fighting hard against any past circumstances that try and that wish to hold you back. Because you know quite well that this is not of service to you. So you're moving forward away from it. The Fool is coupled with the Six of Cups. It is the elements of the past, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling whatever it is you learned from that, that is creating a springboard for you to move forward. Some of you are, the, the energy that I'm feeling for some of you is just, it's like, I really just want to get out of this energy so bad. Like the past is the past and I want to leave it there. Like I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready for the next phase. I'm ready for the next cycle. Good for you, Aries. Good for you. Because what this is saying to me is not that, you know, you're energetically ready, but like 
from a, a conscious understanding, a cognitive understanding, you see the elements of the past for what they truly are and you are no longer allowing to or willing to let them hold you back. You are ready to move forward. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. In the second half of your reading, you have the Hierophant. There you go. There are the lessons. These are the lessons that you have learned that are translating into the movement forward. The Hierophant is coupled with the Five of Wands. That's interesting. See? But it's... Okay. Okay. Um... So what I'm getting for you right now, Aries, is that you're kind of standing in this Hierophant energy. And this is translating into you kind of being an authority in your life. But in terms of this authority that you're standing in, again, it is directly related to all of the lessons that you've experienced and all of the things that you learned from these life lessons. And there, uh, there right there with the five of wands is the opposition. The people that are standing in your way saying, I don't understand. Why does it have to be this way? What are you doing? You can't do this, this, that, and a third. And it's like, no, I absolutely can. I have the power and the authority. And it's not just that I have the power and the authority, but I'm listening to my higher self. And I have the conscious understanding of what it is I've experienced here from these past circumstances that gives me the conviction, the divine power to say, no, I'm moving in this direction. And what this is translating also into Aries is a level of authority that says, I don't need to explain myself to you or anyone else because you have the divine power. The divine power was your birthright, but you have done the work to own that divine power. And anything that stands in your way is just child's play. Your challenge, Aries, in the second half of your reading is strength. Ego, holding your own, standing in your power. Keeping your ego in check, but also keeping, en excuse me, energies around you in check. Like not popping off at the mouth unnecessarily when you feel like it, but also making sure that you maintain certain boundaries. Standing, what I'm getting very specifically for you, Aries, in this challenge of strength is standing up to other people that may want to cut you down, that may want to question you, that may want to stand in opposition, so the fuck what? Right? Standing your ground is a very strong energy I'm getting from this strength card. Strength is coupled with the Page of Pentacles. You're bound and determined, Aries, to start a new reality and to step into this new level for yourself. And in some cases, Aries, what I'm feeling like this challenge is for you is... Um, not giving in to anything that would keep you from effectively moving into this next phase. Again, not popping off at the mouth, not allowing yourself to get involved with any sort of drama or any sort of fights, like literally holding yourself back from generating any other negative karma that will just keep you wrapped up in that old cycle. That is a challenge. I get that. This is the most challenging aspect of this reading that I felt for you. Okay. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Aries, in the second half of your reading is the, wow, is the Wheel of Fortune. I'm hearing time is of the essence, but it's not like you're required to do anything in a certain time period. It's actually divine timing that's of the essence right now, which you have, which we as humans here have no control over. Um, th things are changing. Things are shifting, Aries in a very, very positive way. And your alignment is helping to shift this. All you need to do is maintain your alignment so that things continue to flow in your favor. The Wheel of Fortune is coupled with the Nine of Wands. Exactly, Aries. Just keep going. Just keep persevering. Keep pushing through. You don't have to worry about this or anything else. Just keep pushing through. Through. Your alignment is your best friend right now. And it feels like you're doing everything within your power to keep a certain alignment. And that is exactly where you need to be. Excellent. I want to close this reading out for you, Aries. And I am being guided to call or I'm being called to use to work with the Gods and Titans deck for you. Yes? Okie dokie.
Four shuffles. Which one? Five. Okay. Five shuffles here, Aries. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right. Closing Oracle guidance for you, Aries, for this message. Closing Oracle guidance for my Aries, please, Spirit, from this message. Closing Oracle guidance for Aries, please, Spirit. How would you like to close this reading? What message do you have for Aries to close this reading, please, Spirit? Divine timing is at hand. Whoa. Okay. Divine timing is at hand, is close, is, 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 is a very strong factor in your life right now, Aries. You just have to keep yourself centered, okay? What you have here is Maui, or who you have here, I should say, is Maui. Discovery. Okay. All right, so I'm going to read part of this. Here we go. Feel eager again for discovery and adventure. Curiosity may help you break barriers and solve problems. Across Polynesia, from New Zealand to Hawaii, we hear stories about the hero Maui. Although the tales differ slightly from island to island and region to region, Maui's exploits have given man fire, inven invented this kite, and even fished up whole islands for humans to live on. Sometimes depicted as slightly de disheveled and street smart, Maui manages to outwit his brothers and other opponents in his adventures. Other versions tell, a tell of a strong and mighty Maui, able to perform extraordinary heroic feats, but the common traits in most of his stories are his curiosity and his urge for discovery. Maui is the being responsible for introducing fire to man. In fact, he stole it from a bird. Maui and his brothers went fishing in the lagoon and happened to look back at the mountain near the shore. There was a fire burning. Man had not had fire for many generations as the volcano that supplied the embers had ceased its rumbling. Racing back, Maui found only a wisp of smoke and a family of mud heads stamping the fire out. Every day thereafter, Maui and his brothers checked for a fire but saw nothing. However, as they paddled out to fish one day, they saw a fire glowing against the mountain, out of reach again. Maui, now Maui had a plan. He decided to wait on shore while his brothers went fishing, but no fire appeared. Increasingly frustrated, Maui decided to make a life-size doll of himself and his brothers paddled out with it on one fine day. This time, Maui would catch the birds at their fire. Maui climbed up the mountain and found a hen just about to make the fire. Not waiting for her to start, he grabbed her and held her prisoner. Reminding him that if he hurt her, the secret would be lost, the bird convinced Maui to release her in return for the recipe for fire. The old hen taught Maui how to start a fire by rubbing special sticks together. Maui, quite the funny man, said to the mud hen, come here. There is only one more thing to rub. And he rubbed the feathers on her head so hard that a bald patch appeared. Ever since that day, mud hens have had no feathers on their heads. Maui's sense of discovery also extended to creating a fishing hook so powerful that it pulled up whole islands from the ocean to his other surprise, mind you. And, it's, it's, it, 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 blah, blah, blah. and it is said that he created the islands of Hawaii in that way. Call on Maui when you are eager for discovery, when you are working on solving a difficult problem and the answer seems far away, or when you need to find a little of the hero within yourself. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic month. 
And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah!